I've been running games for a while now, and I still haven't got used to the abundance of awful backstories submitted by players. It's frequently edgy shit, filled to the brim with a series of contrived tragedies meant to justify, I guess, the character's behaviour. Too many people want to be the dark and brooding loner. Few people actually want to be interesting or get into the spirit of these campaigns. They're all so dull too. Given that the entire appeal of these outrageously long-winded and contrived backstories is to stand out from the other players, doesn't the irony ever strike these people that these things are all the fucking same? And for what? The characters just wind up sulking or brooding by themselves, rarely contributing to the overall grip, only ever interacting when there's some way to bring the spotlight back to them. Heathcliff was barely interesting in Wuthering Heights, and he was created by an actual writer. Not sure where these guys get the ego. The edgelord demon vampire has over 145 pages to your story. Oh, oh please tell me, God. God please. please tell me that's not all backstory. Please oh, tell me the campaign's God. over. Please tell me someone just did a light up of the campaign. <laughs> please tell me that's the case. I'm not fucking joking. The only reason why I do not post the actual link is because I know the group will know exactly who shared it. And no offence, but I don't trust anyone here to leave a comment on it. However, I will give you an excerpt. Pain. The first sensation I remember. Oh my god. I can't oh do this god. already, Megan. Oh, I, feel, I literally feel my eyes seeping out of my head because I, I don't want to read this. <laughs> the pain in my very soul. Pain. The first sensation I remember. Babies usually smile. They laugh. Wrap their needed little fingers around smiling parents' hands. I laugh. It's cute, really, to think about. Truthfully, Lou, as I lay here counting the patterns in the cement cracks, I have no idea what affection, love, or even a smile would look like. Not one that wasn't tainted with blood, malice, or wicked enjoyment. Oh Fucking my hell, God. so edgy. My father's favourite pastime. Ah, dear Lord Fassian Dermort, was showing me images of my childhood. One I don't remember, ones I do. Ones that I mistakenly admitted were fuzzy. Vampires. Great lords like Father de Mort. Love to play mind games. Many have often misconstrued my father for a psionic. He can't hurt anyone. I've never seen him peel anyone's skin off with his mind. But Lord Fassian does not need to physically hurt someone to leave them helpless. Sometimes a person's memories, their fears, are the worst holes in armour. And Great Lord Fassian makes sure none of his servants ever forget. Oh my god, I'm I, I don't know what to say about I that. Really I don't actually know what to have say. I actually have no words. I'm, I'm sorry. Cringing. I literally I've got goosebumps right now because yeah. it's so cringy. Hey, that's definitely too Carlin material to me, <laughs> if I be honest with you. Ugh. What the fuck? I thought I had problems, but I have clearly been blessed. What is this shit? Oh, it can't possibly be bad. No. He can't hurt anyone. <laughs> I've never seen him peel anyone's skin off of his mind, but Lord Fazian does not need to physically hurt someone to leave them helpless. Cathargo Del Nest. <laughs> <laughs> the worst part about this is that the actual quality of writing is good. If only the subject matter was, wasn't was pure edge. <laughs> OP, help, I'm bleeding from the edge. <laughs> Cut my fingers. <laughs> Cut my fingers to pieces. This, this is my last resort. Suffocation. <laughs> <Don't. laughs> oh, so all I can hear is Evanescence blasting in the background. Bring me to life. <laughs> oh my god, I actually can't stand that song. To be honest, I'm tempted to just save the story and post a copy of it when it isn't my bedtime. Or does Google notify you when someone downloads something? So OP actually like given the Google link, <laughs> the Google yeah. Documents link, and somebody's like, he wasn't exaggerating about the numbers of the pages. This isn't a backstory. This is a fucking light novel. Hell, actual novels have been shorter. Also, this is edgy as fuck. Every single line oozes edge. Not even the silly kind of middle school edgy, but the pretentious as hell edge belonging to your 30-something oh! playing Vampire the Masquerade in the LARP. <laughs> <laughs> You see, for me, I, th I think, like, you know, I don't really mind. See, for me, when you see teenagers getting on, like, edge words, it's not really that bad. Everybody I think everyone edges. everyone does that, and it's like, uh, it's I not had Jango jeans, with, Jango jeans with fucking, um, you know, wallet chains. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah, you did. Well, I can't say anything. I was just as edgy whenever I was that age, so. No, well, I'm talking about whenever I was, like, seven. That was oh, for me. God's sake, <laughs> Megan. <laughs> <laughs> That's pure, honestly, Jango jeans are the definition of white trash edge. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. 
Hey guys, this is just a quick bit of promo. We got our website up and running and we have a massive restock on most of the models. However, one of the cool things about the website is if there's a model that you're waiting on, you can enter your email and be put on a waiting list. And it's not just good for you so then you'll know when they're restocked. We can also see what you guys are waiting on and what we should be printing. <laughs> so either way, the models are by far the best way to support this channel and to help us do videos that YouTube would find inappropriate on the platform. <laughs> And, like, let's be serious, the models are pretty based looking, so, once again, just look at the titties. Look at the lizard titties! <laughs> but anyway, let's continue on with the video. Alright, first five of Rava's and Co's shitty deeds. Pulled a hideously made homebrew race of a fucking D&D wiki for a 5th edition game. DM rather than just saying no. Edited the class so it can fit in. Two. Making her neutral evil alignment. Very obviously chaotic evil in demeanour. Only thing that's really stopping her from doing anything worth smiting over is the fear of punishment and using us as heal bots. She suffers none of the consequences of being undead when it comes to healing in our game, by the way. 3. DM decides to give her double <laughs> from what she'd normally get from her anti-paladins class damage from charisma class ability. No, that, that DM's simping. I don't care. Pure simp? That, that DM is simping. I had the debate with the DM several times why that wasn't fair in the slightest. Vampire drawbacks or no? Being undead shouldn't give them double a fucking bonus already so powerful. I don't know, what can you say about that, honestly? Simp. It sounds like a simp behaviour to yeah. me. 4. Makes things very personal when she loses a fight. One example included when my barb slash monk. Well, it was really just a shitty underpowered homebrew class. But I dropped that character not too long in after I knew enough about the system. Challenged her to a friendly spar to test her enlarged potion. Enlarged potion? <laughs> I wonder what the fuck they were going to learn. You know, funny, that's just going to... Like, that's a problem that's I've got here. So Every bad. time I come across stuff like this, oh my god, it's inflation porn. You know that's what it is. <laughs> Anytime I'm coming across stuff like this, my mind automatically assumes it's the worst possible thing it could be. <laughs> I know. You know I what I mean? I think it's because we've read so many bad stories. It's just I'm like, like, oh, it's going to end up in rape and sex. It's, it's, <laughs> it's going to roll intimidation for seduction. <laughs> you know, oh my god, what are you doing, boys? When I somehow beat her with my horribly incompetent character, not even using my actual damage abilities, her character literally went into a corner and pouted as the player threw a fit. You know what that is? What? That's the opposite of beast and repelled. That's cringe and blue pilled. <laughs> Go fuck yourself, Jim. <laughs> Five. Did I mention she is absolutely terrible when it comes to combat? Because she was so OP. She could have won that fight against me easily, but rather than actually use her plus 13 to damage, she kept using spells, which my character kept getting a huge mage slayer advantage. She also tried to run away with her flight 40 foot demon wings. Oh my god, oh, what the f- 40 course. foot is she in our plane? <laughs> <laughs> Only to get grabbed and punched down. Other instances include going away ahead of the party and getting her brain sucked out by mind flares. <laughs> Getting shot down by lightning bolts, along with her fucking nightmare mount dying, and setting off a balor intentionally. What? What? <laughs> Why? 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 She Why? sounds like an absolute cursed character. <laughs> yeah, that is just cursed all night. You know, this is one of the things I would really like to play Vampire the Masquerade, though. I think it sounds like a cool setting, but it is just too hyper edgy and it's so easy to yeah. like why does it I've never read a good story from Vampire the Masquerade. They've always been edgy shit shows. Yeah. Somebody wrote, half demon, half vampire. Holy shit, there are people who actually play this. Why not just hang a sign around your neck that says, kick me at first possible opportunity? <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that's where it probably should be. Let's be serious. <laughs> so he goes on to write more instances about her. Number six. Being inexperienced is one thing, except she has been playing longer than me and still somehow manages to know less about the system we're playing. I would call her a min-maxer, but that would imply an actual regard for the rules at minimum. She even boasted a couple of times to everyone of a time she was allowed to play a fucking ghost PC and how broken she was. <laughs> I'm going to assume she took no damage from anything yeah. bar like the most bullshit of stupid broken weapons. Not only is her character greedy, she as a player is greedy. She's always wanting the biggest share of the loot. And guess what? 
she gets it because of the DM not knowing jack shit about splitting up treasure. No, no she gets it because your DM's a fucking simp. Simp. <laughs> simp. Simp. By the way, guys, we've actually got a new Wurgok class on the website. Oh, yeah, uh, we do. We've got the Simp Wurgok, if any of you guys are interested in playing as a Simp. <laughs> yeah, well, you we're know. talking about Simps. There you go. Go <laughs> well, and have a look. It's well, on the website. <laughs> well, well, Simps, it's only one pound. Helps us out a lot, you know. Also, about that Balor incident, she blatantly metagamed the knowledge that they explode. But the DM excused her because she was half demon. Well, you know, maybe she would have that knowledge well, if yeah. she, like, you know, okay, you know. If she was half demon, uh, she like her backstory would. is mega, mega cringe. But like, you know, if it's there, it's there. Yeah. I can't really argue with that. Number seven, the DM always seems to find a way to make the game go completely sideways to wank off the story she's been writing. Sam. <laughs> Sam. <Sam-p. laughs> We were supposed to set a trap for her father, Fasian, because apparently the gods wanted him dead, even though there's a fucking Aboleth attacking. Our two bards used their spells and stealth to sneak it in. Only for it not to matter, because the familiar scratched out the glyph. It was then we got to see closure for Rava. Oh wait, never mind. Fasian's still alive for no r- reason. <laughs> reasons? <laughs> for no, no reason. reasons. For no reason, and we had to hear him monologue while being stuck in a force cage, and no one knows what Misty Step is. Ugh. <laughs> oh. It. She also complains about her character being judged about her alignment when she does that to herself. Her character might as well have been using a megaphone to announce, I'm only using you all for my own benefit, as well as, I'm a murderous degenerate who revels in cruel and unusual killing and torture. Oh, another part with the enabler or simp DM coming in the next post because this is getting too big. So his next post said, Her moral test for a temple trial had her choosing between a good aligned legendary weapon and a goddamned evil artifact. She chooses the evil artifact, but then she bitches out when the price of sacrificing the cooked dwarf cleric, who also orally pleasures her, pleasures her what? Oh my god, it's a, requ- a whole group. It's the, a requirement the, the, to keep it. The whole group is simping for her. That's why uh, it's been... Oh my god. It's not just the DM. Uh, then the GM lets her have a chance at grabbing the legendary weapon, as long as she promises to be good <laughs> in the most bare minimum possible. Needless to say, I called bullshit, and I was lucky a couple players knew enough about basic philosophy to know that bribery is not a path to good. And the player yet again threw a fit. <sighs> well, if any of you guys ever came across, like, you know, a player, like, don't get me wrong. Have any of you kill. ever came across, like, mad simps in games? Yeah, That's actually. That's what I want to yeah, know. Yeah, I want to hear your tell me, simp. Tell me the simp stories. Yeah, the simp stories are way, like, honestly, you know what it is? Boy's just huffing on that piss ether, you know? <laughs> tell what, me the simp stories about your D&D shenanigans that you've seen <laughs> like major simpanins also like you know genuine it does help us out a lot you should check out the simp subclass yeah it's nothing special but it is balanced i will say yeah, if you want to play something different or yeah. you want to just have a wee bit of a dick about your mates it's yeah so, it's something to check out um the and pe- it's only a pound yeah well, exactly it's like what's that in dollars like, like fuck all <laughs> yeah exactly um, like you know, the the whole thing with the warlock is you you worship, you get your powers from the ethereal thought. Mm-hmm. So uh, check that out. I think you might guys might just enjoy it. I think it's yeah. pre- it was a lot of fun making it. Anyway, I'm glad you there. Check out the models as well. Yeah, helps the site a lot. But yeah, I want to hear more about these simp stories because I think the simp was more enjoyable than the cringe. Yeah, <laughs> like I you know. <laughs> well, what do you guys think? Let us know what you think down below, as always. And like you know, go and hit the subscribe button and hit the notification. I'm going to say bell. it again. I'm going to say it again. A chin. To oh that. my god! <laughs> Just click it. Oh my god! Just don't listen. <laughs> no, okay. Just okay. click Hit the bell. Yeah, you know the bell notification. Yeah, I get it. You get it, Megan? Put my sin bell away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, guys, we went for long enough. Hope you guys enjoyed this. See you later. Bye.